What can I say? Mamba out. Welcome back to the clipboard. One half of your host, I'm Coach Chuck. It's your boy T Rob, aka Coach Rail. We back. Yeah, a little uh somber news in the week that we missed. Uh yeah. by now everybody knows Kobe Bryant passed away on the twenty sixth, a helicopter accident. Uh as you know, that was my favorite player, one of my yeah. definitely one of my favorite players, him, Jordan. Uh, he was definitely one A or one B, however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> um tragic. Seven other uh well, his daughter passed away with yeah, him, and then G-G. seven other people yep. on uh, the flight. Kind of crazy. Uh, a legend. You don't think that he was going to pass like that. Yeah, not at 41. It just then, you know, that's not something you even think about this early in his life. You like, you think he going to be at the game so he got the grays and his, and his beard and all that extra stuff. Uh, kind of crazy because, like, I was thinking about it. The night before LeBron passed Kobe mm-hmm. in the uh, – Scoring league, he went from number four to number three, past yeah. Kobe, and the Lakers was playing Philly, and to me is it's, it's crazy because obviously Kobe played for the Lakers, but he's from Philly, and LeBron passed him. This is what I'm gonna say about this. Like I feel like everyone everywhere because they have such a connection to Kobe and they they feel for Kobe so much and they're such big fans of Kobe. They're trying to make connections out of everything, like. They bring it up dates and add these numbers up, and it's going to equal, like, it's so much stuff that people are trying to just connect to it that it's. I feel like it's kind of just taken away from everything. Like, just let him have his moment. He died. He passed away. It was tragic. Let's just mourn his death. We don't need to do all the extra stuff, I feel like. I mean, you can say that, but, like, some people believe in energy, and some people believe in numbers. Yeah. And numbers are a, a, a common thread throughout the Bible, if, if you believe in the Bible and everything. So when people see these numbers and things like that, when somebody, for example, and I'm mean, not saying I believe it, I just thought about the Lakers, Philly, and okay. then he passed and LeBron passed him, right? But the, the the first game that the Lakers played was against Portland uh, after his death okay, at the uh, Staples Center. At the end of the game, they combined for 242 points. Kobe's number 24, his daughter was number two. LeBron even spoke about that. Like, that's that's eerie. You know what I mean? Trey Young wore number eight the, the day after and then shot 81% from the free throw line and shot 24 shots. Like, it's just crazy. Like, you, I mean, and maybe you don't think about those numbers before, but when you somebody passed and then those numbers just keep popping up consistently, you're just like, yo, it's crazy. But, I mean, I get it. But it's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there, you know. So, I mean, I don't really – yeah, I ain't, I ain't really too big into the conspiracy theories. Um, I just like to remember people for who they were and the moments they had. Like some of the greatest Kobe moments, I can like remember certain things. Like one thing that's always gonna stand out to me about Kobe, the moment where uh, Matt Barnes he tried to like ball fake and like hit him in the face when he inbounded the ball, and Kobe didn't even flinch. He just standing there staring at him like, what? Like that's one of the great Kobe moments. I think you can't forget a moment like that. So stop, right? Let's talk about our favorite moment. And mine is more personal because it doesn't really have to do with anything that he did on the floor, right? Mm-hmm. It just, like I said, that was my favorite player. As you know, my pops used to coach. We were sponsored by Adidas. So we were yeah. at Benedict freshman year mm-hmm. playing freshman. And um, I had mad Adidas, you know, because he was sponsored. So all I wore was Adidas. But yeah. to, I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like wearing no Adidas today. So my mom had just bought me the Iversons, the, uh, the questions. Yep, I remember. So we in the layup line. My pops was the, the all, the all black ones. Right? I had the all black yeah, joint yeah, with the gold in it, right? This day. Oh my god! So <laughs> <laughs> my mom's bought me the irises. My pops ain't no. Right? So we in the layup line. Whatever, whatever. He not there. He walks in. He speak whatever, whatever. Then I just saw him. I saw. He, if you know my pops, you know he's crazy. <laughs> so I saw him. I looked at him. I said, Shit. "Shout out to B." He looked at my feet. He's like, "Yo, come here, yo." Why you got those on your feet? Come on, he's sponsored by Adidas. His team is sponsored by Adidas. So we got to wear Adidas. I got on Reebok. He said, man, take them shits off, man. Go to the car. So I went to the car, and then they had a pair of Kobe's waiting in the car for me. But it it was good for me because those were the Kobe's I wanted. He wouldn't mm-hmm. give them to me unless yeah. I scored 20 in the game or something like that. So I yeah. got them without actually scoring. So that's one of my favorite Kobe moments because, you know, I got the Kobe's that I wanted. How about you? Besides the Matt Barnes. Besides you know, the Matt Barnes, the second Kobe moment that I remember – um, when people kept talking about Kobe, oh, he keeps shooting, he shoots too many shots, shoots too many bad shots. It's game seven against the Phoenix Suns. And he decides, you know what, I'm going to just pass. 
I'm going to just pass, and I'm going to put it on everyone else to see if they're going to step up and see what they're going to do. So all the people that's doing all the talking, all the complaints, all the little mumbling under your breath, oh, Kobe shooting too much, oh, it's Sebastian. Now it's your turn. What you going to do? Of course well, they lost the game. <laughs> of course they lost the game. Well, they was trash, man. So was, they should have been cool. talking. But That's what I hate. Like, don't don't talk about the mamba. Like. But what I would say is this, right? One thing about Kobe that everybody respects is that he was the ultimate competitor. Oh, yeah. Right? So let's segue it into our next topic, mm. which is, to me, I mean, everybody's still competitive. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. it's a lot of friendship it's, now. It's levels. In the it's NBA. Levels. Right? It's always levels. So now, Andre Iguodala got traded to the Memphis Grizzlies mm-hmm. in the offseason. And he hasn't played the game. Nope. Uh, he came out and basically was saying, if they don't trade him, he's sitting out the season. He's sitting out the season, and he only wants to go to a couple of teams. Yeah. Dylan Brooks, shooting guard for the Memphis uh, Grizzlies, said, I can't wait till we trade Andre Iguodala so we can show him what Memphis is all about. Yeah, talk that. And, and John Morant put the emoji saying, basically saying, yeah, like I'm with that. Yeah, we want all smoke. So, you know, Steph Curry, that's his guy. You know, he won three championships with him. He put a picture of Iguodala with the uh, <laughs> trophy mm-hmm. and put the shish emoji like, shh, they, 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 they bugging. So John Morant came back and put a picture of Kevin Durant. Like, yeah, y'all got two of those things because the KD yeah, really wasn't basically, y'all. Basically. So they bringing spiciness back. They bringing that like competitive it. level back. How you feel about that? I love it. I love it. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I feel AI because he like, I'm too old to be trying to help rebuild a, a franchise. So put me somewhere where I can be effective and uh, have a chance to fight for a championship. But I feel the young dudes too because they like, we good enough. Let me, but this is the only thing I would say about the young dudes. They kind of too young to really fully understand the business of the NBA. So that's why they may not fully understand his decision and what he's doing right now by sitting out. Well, I want to talk about the Iggy, right? Because you brought it up, right? Yeah. He doesn't want to play for. He wants to play for a contender, mm-hmm. pretty much. How do you How do you feel about that as an older vet? Who has rings? It's not like he's, you know, at the end of his ropes. It's not like he Charles Barkley trying to play with the Rockets or, yeah. you know, uh Peyton and Malone trying to play with the Lakers. Like he has mm-hmm. rings already. And now he's just only playing if it's the right situation, right? How do you feel as though that now turns basketball? Like because I right, if you get drafted, you got no choice but to play for the team that you're drafted by. Yeah. Unless they trade you. Correct. Pretty much, right? So now he's just sitting out. Like to me, I think is it sets a bad example because how so? If you look at somebody like Carmelo Anthony, if you look at somebody like J.R. Smith, who mm-hmm. was dying to play basketball, not because they want to win rings, because they love basketball. And they, now J.R. might have an opportunity, but Melo had to basically wait a year and a half, two years. It's a big thing for him to even get signed. And you got somebody who's on a team who won't play because. Basically, I, I, I don't want to play for you guys. When there's a million other people who would like love to be in that position just to play in the NBA. I feel John Moran. I feel Dylan Brooks. Like, at the end of the day, you thought we was going to be trash. We're, we're in that playoff race right now. We're AFC. Mm-hmm. So, basically, you disrespecting us, saying we trash. You go, and who's to say you're going to win a championship if we trade you somewhere? So, how do you feel as though about – like, let's compare Melo's situation where he was dying to play and couldn't get signed to somebody like Iguodala who's on a team making money. They want him to play. And he's like, nah, fam, trade me somewhere else. Like, I mean, I feel like it's two different situations. Like, the Melo situation, he's in a situation where he just wants to play ball. Like, mm-hmm. this is what he loves to do. This is what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Iggy's situation is more like I, I want to play under certain circumstances. Like, I'm not begging to be in the league right at this point. Like, So retire. I, yeah, but he, he, if he gets the right circumstance, he's going to take it. Retire. Well, like, it's different if you play and you just like, yo, trade me. Like, I, for example, JR last year was playing with Cleveland. Mm-hmm. But their whole emphasis was we're rebuilding. We want to focus on the young boys. So he's yeah. coming to practice. He's doing whatever. And they're saying, well, you're only going to play five minutes. And he's like, all right, trade me. Yeah. It's different because he's coming to his job. Like, today, it's still a job. But I feel like – you know, the whole trade situation, you know, I think it was kind of a spiteful thing towards him. So that's why I feel like he has this type of energy. It wasn't like it wasn't like I'm um like he just we just traded you because we wanted these better pieces to come replace you or you know, or you have no value to us anymore. It was 
Uh, I think you're speaking out too much. Like after that Mark Jackson interview and stuff, he said he was saying about that. That's when this whole thing came about. So I feel like it was some extra energy behind it. It wasn't just all right. He out of here. We're gonna get some like nah. It's a reason behind him moving. So he like if you're gonna move me to a team that I don't want to be to, and I'm letting both parties know I don't want to be there and they still going to accept the trade, then they understand that they need to move me. And that's, that's what the issue for me comes but this to play. But this is the thing, right? When you're in the NBA, when, you, mm-hmm. when you're playing basketball, you're coming up to high school, college, however your route is, right, and, you're, and you get drafted to the NBA or your dream is to, get, to go to the NBA, you know it's a business at the end of the day. Like I was just watching something with DeMar DeRozan. He said he was exactly. shell-shocked when he got traded from Toronto to San Antonio. He had yeah. been there so many years, but then you got to realize – it's a business. Like he, a business. It, I could. It, he ain't getting paid like we get paid at work. He's getting paid millions of dollars. Yeah. I don't give. A, I don't care what the reason is. If I'm the owner, the GM, like if I feel as though it's better for my team to trade you, I'm going to trade you. But I'm not. It's not like I'm trading you and I'm taking away money. All right. I feel. Like, I get what you're saying. That makes sense. But I think the GM and the owners understood his stance coming in. So I don't think they have a gripe with it. I know the players do, but I don't think the owners or GMs have a gripe with it because they expected this. They knew what the situation was. All right. Now, I do think that what you're saying about him retiring is some validity to it. I think that at the end of the season, if he if he doesn't get what he wants, he doesn't go to a contender, I think, yeah, it might be that time. Man. You know, he can't get up. But at this point right now, it's still a possibility that he can get what he wants. So why retire? I mean, because at the end of the day, if they was going to trade, they had all offseason to trade you. Mm-hmm. They could have traded you up to now. Mm-hmm. You pretty much just wasting a roster spot. Mm-hmm. And after a, certain, a couple of more days, he won't even get his uh, his pay this year because it's pretty much they didn't tell him to sit home. He's just not showing up. Like, JR got paid, and they told him, all right, go sit home. Well, you want to trade? We'll look for a trade. At one point, they were saying, we're not looking to trade him. And now you tell me you only want to go to certain teams. What if I don't like – what these teams have to offer me in return. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it's a, a tough situation. I'm just more so looking at it as it's a bunch of players who grind in, a bunch of people in the G League, uh, j- people like JR. You know, we cool with JR. Like, I, I mean, facts, yeah. he probably Shout would love to be to in the JR. league right now. And you got a roster spot and you just not playing just because you 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 want to be in the perfect situation. Like, shit, Vince Carter, 41 years old, 40 high old he is, and he playing in Atlanta. You're just playing for the love of the game. So, That's like, right. so my, certain people like certain players like that. They play for the love of the game. It's certain players that just they just want to play. You know, they playing for the love of the game. It's certain players they need to play for championships. So it's different. It's different for each people, depending on the person. Now, you ready to get spicy? Let's pause, do it. Pause. 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 <laughs> right. Hey, yo! Shout out to my boy Shell, man. Shell had uh, was on Facebook. And he put a post up, and it uh-huh. said, "Damian Lillard or Russell Westbrook." And uh, I, I, I said, "Dame." Brody. And, and you took Russ. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's let's get into it, right? Let's do it. You can tell me why you taking Russ over Dame. Uh, for one, I'm just a Russ fan, so I'm a little biased on my decision. But I just think he, he does more with less. Like, whenever he has less, like, he still, like, elevates the team to certain levels. Like, Dane was never in the MVP race. Like, never. Like, not one year in his entire NBA existence. Okay. But Russ, he was constantly there. Three. No, not constantly. He was there for two years. I would say three. Two. He averaged a triple-double three years. How was he not? In he wasn't in an MVP race last year. Paul George was in the MVP race last year, even right. though Brody was there. All right. Whatever. Is that that not a fact? The the three people that was in the MVP race was Paul George, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, nah. and Harden. Uh, you might be right. All right. I, so, I keep, that. so keep going. Cause, cause I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know I'm going to chew your ass up. Pause. Uh, <laughs> super pause. Like, what's ahead. up with you today? I said pause. All right, man. That's a lot of pauses today. Whatever. Come on. I'll let you. I'll I've been, let you, I've been I'll waiting let you for chime, this. I'll let you chime in. I, I'll come back. I'll rebuttal you. I dis. I disagree. You said okay. he's done more with less. Yes. The year he won MVP, I want to say they were the seventh seed, the okay. sixth seed. It was talked that he wasn't even going to get it because usually the MVP goes to someone 
Liverpool team is in the top three or four. They gave it to him pretty much because he did it. And don't get me wrong, I'm a Russell Westbrook fan. My people know this, right? But they gave it to him because he did the triple-double, and yeah. it hadn't never been done since maybe Oscar Robertson, I believe. Yeah. Right? He averaged a triple-double for a full year. That's the only person that's ever done it. So yeah. he got the MVP for that. Cool. The next year he did it again, mm-hmm. and which was why he was in it, right? But now it's... You know, when you do something consistently, it doesn't it doesn't wow people anymore, right? So now we look at the aesthetic of he's always outside of the year, the first year where he uh he did the triple double. Yeah, his team has been consistently better than Dame Willis. Player for player, hmm. up and down the roster, he's played with two MVPs. Hmm. He played with Harden. He played with Kevin Durant. You talking about Harden? You talking about this year? He's playing with Harden. I know you're not talking about Harden back. Like we can talk about that too. He, he won six men of the year. Whatever you want to do. However you want to spice it up. So CJ wasn't better than him that year? No, he wasn't. Oh my. No, he wasn't. Yo. I mean, go ahead. Man, you about to make me sleep. Go ahead, because CJ McCollum oh. came into the league, averaged five points his first two years in the league. Yeah. James Harden averaged, I want to say, 11. The next year, 13. The next year, 17. CJ McCollum averaged 20 his third year, right? Mm-hmm. At the second option. James Harden averaged 17 as the third option behind two first team all NBA players. Okay, and you think CJ McC- so if James Harden went to went to Portland, how much he would have averaged? I don't know. You don't know that. Okay. The first year he went and got his own team, what did he do? He killed. All-star. Had CJ McCollum ever been all-star? Has he? No. You sure? I'm positive. Look it up. Never been an all-star. Okay. So he went from six man of the year. To perennial All Star to MVP. Now, mm-hmm. if CJ McCollum gets his own team, can he do it? It's possible, but highly, highly unlikely. They talk about trading him now okay. because and you're gonna see what the value is for him. The value ain't gonna be what the value was for Harden. Everybody knew what Harden was gonna be. CJ McCollum popped on the scene yeah. from Lehigh. Nobody expected him mm-hmm. to be a 20 point per game scorer. Yep. Cool. <clears throat> People knew what Harden was. He just was behind two 30-point-per-game scores. Okay. So what, what, what more you want from him? All I'm saying is that the years that the, that year when he averaged 17 was not better than any of the CJ's prime years either. What prime years? He just, you just brought it up. He, he just, averaged 20. And, and he averaged 17. And he was behind two people that averaged 30. You can't say that. just talk about you what can't he say did. That. We can only but go you, off his production. No, you can't. How you going to go off? Because it, 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 because such, it makes such, it, no. it makes a big difference. If you if you don't have the ball in your hand as much as I have the ball in my hand, how can I expect you to score as much? All right, that's not my problem. So if you're you're a coach, right? Yes. So you have different teams. Yes. You got one kid on one team who averages 17, but yep. he got two all stars in front of him, mm-hmm. right? And another kid who averaged 20, never made an all star. He's good. He got one player in front of him. You yeah. can't reasonably think that, yo, if I put the, if I trade these two, he might average more to him because he's doing more. He's, I mean, he's only averaging one field goal more with more opportunities. Okay. You can't think that? Yeah. Okay. You can besides think that, that but besides I'm that, saying, I'm just going off the actual facts of the situation. Okay. That's all I'm going off. So of. let me ask you a question. I'm not going off so, the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Like okay, cool. Are. Let's the go off the imaginary, let's, fairy tales. Let's go, tales, let's go off the actual facts. Let's go off the actual facts. Go off the actual facts. After KD left, how come he's never made it out the first round? Who? Russell Westbrook. He's never made it out the first round. How come the last two times they played Portland, he got him out of there? Bye. Who got him out of That was once. That was one time. And he, he shot from half court. Like, come on, man. Doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. On, man. You can't go around rocking the baby, doing all yeah, this. Yeah, because he was and, kicking and Dame his Lit- ass. No, Dame Little was rocking their ass. And what Russ was doing? Shooting, Coming right back shooting at Shooting 39% his ass. from the field. And what was Dame shooting? Like 43, 44. Maybe. Maybe like four, Let me ask you a question. Like How come Dame was guarding Russ, but Russ wasn't guarding Dame? Who was Russ guarding? What, who, who, who hit the shot over? Dame Lillard. That Paul was Paul George. George. Paul George was guarding him. They, Russell Westbrook, Who's the come best here. defender on the team? I don't. We, the no, best we, defender we, guards say, the best player. We say, we're not talking about coaching strategies. We talk about the actual facts of what happened. Yes. At the end of the day, Russell Westbrook wasn't guarding him when it mattered, but uh-huh. he was guarding him. Was he? Dame Lillard was guarding Russell Westbrook. Was he? I don't remember that. I bet you don't. I don't I, remember I, you remember that. this though? You remember this? He got a he got a he got a nickname off of him. What is, the logo. 
They call him Logo who? now. That, that they was, call him Dame Logo. He was doing that before. And he, they was going, he was doing that all but season. At the end of the day, but at the end of the he day, was doing that all at season. the end like, of the day, on, don't say he got it off. Right. Don't disrespect day, my boy. You could do it all year, but when you make a signature moment out of it, oh, that's God. when it becomes solidified. It was he already solidified. Okay, so what happened the last time they played? He's Report. the highest percentage what? shooter from that range out of so any, anybody in the NBA. I know that. Steph Curry. I know that. All right, so don't say it's because of that one shot. Wait, wait, wait. That's this year. That's this year, and Steph played seven no, games. No, that was this year. That was last year, too. Now, we can look that up. Yeah. Let's see. That, that was the playoffs. The shot. That was the playoffs. No. I don't think it was the whole season. It was the whole season. We can look it up. He's the highest percentage shooter the, from that ring. Okay, so why not guard him up there? Why are they backing he up was. off of him? He contested it. Yeah, he had to lean into it. All right, he's not going to pressure him because he's okay, going to get blown so what by happened, C- So what me. happened the last time Dame played Russ when they just played Houston? 45, excuse me, bye. And it's a double double digit victory without my starting center, without my backup center, and I, I don't even know if CJ McCollum played that game. Why are you bringing up old shit? Nah, <laughs> you know I mean? let, let, let's talk about right now. CJ McCollum, not CJ McCollum. Nah, Dame Lillard. No, 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 no. Forty five and ten, six straight games. Let me say something. That's what I was gonna say to you. If you're gonna base it off just this year, it's, it's not even a competition. Like Dame gets it. I'm just Man. basing it off career wise. Like, but if you base it off this year, like. We can't with, really with have Russell Westbrook career numbers. Oh, we can look that up because his numbers are pretty good. Career numbers. He's averaging 26, 8, and 7. And Dame is averaging 24, 7, and 4. Hmm. He's averaging 23, cool. 8, and 7. Dame, uh, Russell Westbrook for his career. That's this year, fam. No, oh, shoot, <laughs> you you see how they my try fault. to spice it up? My my you fault. see how they try to spice it up? Like, Twenty three, seven, and eight. I, my I, bad. I apologize. Do you believe in analytics, like uh, player usage and things I mean, like that? They serve a purpose, but I mean, they don't tell the full story. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. If you put Russ on that Portland team and you put Dame on that OKC team, which team goes further? Which one? The, from last year. Do Portland go to the Western Conference Finals? Who's Portland sending the last year? They had um, Jokic. No, no, Jokic yeah, didn't even. Yeah, he got hurt. Cantor. Enos Cantor. I think it's a tough one. Why? I think I think they both. He I played this, with this is Paul I, George, this is what I said. Steven Adams, and Schroeder. This is what I would say. I think that if they if they match up again, it's going to be a six or seven game series, and either team lose the next round. That's not what I asked you. I, I can't give you a definitive answer because I'm not sure. Why? Because Rusk has the ability to snap. So if he had the ability to snap, why he ain't snapped since KD left? He been snapping. What you mean? How do you think he got I mean, MVP? What are you talking about? And they lost the first round. Shit happens. <laughs> Come on, man. Crazy, crazy, <laughs> crazy. Ain't hey, that's what Uncle Murray said? <laughs> Man, you really retarded, man. I'm just now, the book, man. Russell Westbrook is, is is my guy. That's my. Guy. But right now, I'm taking Dame. I'm taking Dame. The MVP. Now, yeah, right now, you gotta go with Dame. The book. MVP thing don't really like move me because right now is Giannis Antetokounmpo is the MVP, but is he better than Kawhi Leonard? I don't. I'm not sold on him. But he got an MVP. But is he better I'm than Kawhi Leonard? No. All right. So you can't use the MVP. Because MVP is kind of, I mean, it's not a team award, but it's kind of based off your teams. Until Russ. Mm-hmm. So, until Russ. Out of that. Make sure you put that in there. Well, Russ got braids because of what Dame did to him. He changed his whole persona up. You feel me? Harden got braids too. What are you it, talking it, about? Hey. Steph did that to him. Steph, when was the last time Steph played? Steph the last time they like beat 14 years. The last time they beat Houston in the playoffs? Without KD. <laughs> anyway, go. now let's get to the high school ranks. Yes. Real good game that happened this past. Eh, I ain't going to say no real good game. We're not well, going to go there. I, I'm going to say it's a good game. It wasn't the most entertaining game, um, but you get to see different aspects of basketball. Uh, Patrick School versus Roselle Catholic yeah. at Roselle Catholic. Patrick I mean, School prevails 43 to 40. What's your thoughts? I mean, honestly, like with that game, I wasn't really impressed. Like, I think it was a. Uh, it was a lackluster game for me until about the last, I would say, six minutes of the game. Like, it was real lackluster. A lot of missed shots. Like, I know the big kid, um, Adama, I think that's how you say his name. Adama. Adama. Yeah, like, he got, like, 20-something rebounds, but he ain't had no choice. They missed so many shots. Like, I could have got a rebound out there. You could have got a rebound. Everybody's going to rebound. What Oprah say? You get a rebound. You get a rebound. There was so many missed shots. Well, Like, they had to get rebounds. So, like, for me, it wasn't like – 
I wasn't really impressed with that game. Like I like I did like what CJ did towards the end of the game. He stepped up, he made some big shots. That was cool. Uh the big man, he did make some some good moves down low. I don't even really think he made some good moves. He just made some shots down low. Um, but overall, I had uh, bigger expectations for the game than what it lived up to. Well, styles make matchups just like mm-hmm. in boxing, right? Styles make fights. So, uh, my analysis of the Patrick School it has been for this past year, they don't have any shooters. Facts. They have mostly slashers, big right. men. They like to, to, to create offense off of their defense. So, I wasn't expecting them to come out there and shoot the lights out. You know, Kirk's not real. Kirk can make a three. He's mm-hmm. not really a three point shooter. Uh, Zarek really doesn't look to shoot the three as often. He's more of a slasher. Yeah, uh, Noah shoot. barely played that game. I don't know what that was about. He barely played. Deontay doesn't really shoot too often. So, as far as their guards, and Kaminga didn't play. So, I wasn't expecting them to be out there hitting a bunch of jumpers. And at times, they pretty much threw a college lineup out there. They had the Chinese kid at 6'10, Adama at 6'10. Uh, I can't remember the other kid name, number 34. He's about 6'9". Zari- uh, the skinny one. Oh, yeah. He didn't play that much. Home. No, he played He played them in the whole first half. Come in, but what's his name? They didn't get in. Noah, Noah didn't get in. But they had Deontay out there. Yeah, but the, the Delano, it was the two 6'10s, the Chinese and Adama. Yeah. 34. Zarik, and then they was tr- putting a bunch of uh, subbing in. Zarik, between Zarik, Kirk, and the number 34. Yeah. No, was good. See, no. he, he he did a little bit more for me the first game. Maybe that's why I noticed him. Like he was more active. Yeah, but then Adama didn't play. That's true too. So you know. Yeah. But uh, they threw a college lineup out there, and then it was gonna be hard for Roselle Catholic to score because out, outside of Cliff, those four to five kids I just named are taller than everybody on Roselle Catholic roster. That's like right. Zarek playing shooting guard for them that game, and he was taller than everybody outside of Cliff on the roster. Mm. So, and, you know, they played a lot of man. You know, they tried to start the game off dumping it down the cliff. They sent the immediate double team. Yeah. Uh, the one time CJ post up, they sent a double team. And they not double teaming with guards. They double teaming yeah. with two six tens. It was going to be very hard for them to uh, go. That's when I start looking into but coaching. I was just about to say that. I'm like, that's some, the coaches got to figure out some type of game plan or strategy for those situations because they know what it is. Everyone knows who their two main guys are. And then, especially with Richie being out, that can't really dribble, drive, create stuff for him. Like they have to figure out a certain strategy to get them better shot opportunities. I feel. Well, I mean, it's gonna be kind of hard for Cliff because he's not a three-point shooter. He's not really creating his own shot off the dribble. He's more of a post-up, uh, pick and roll, alley oop type player. Gonna be hard. They got to draw up plays for him, but they would really plug in the plug in the, uh, the paint. Yeah. And just face guard and CJ all over. Now I think they needed to try to create some type of motion for CJ, move him off the screen. And, and yeah. the crazy thing is they're capable of doing it. I'm not, like, the biggest fan of the coaching but, staff like yeah. that. But at the end of the game, they I was they about to say plays. that. At the end of the game, they got good shots. Well, but it was they only... got about two shots. CJ made some great shots. Like, I did yeah, one, two shots. He's tr- a shooter, so they he they got him enough space to get the shot off. This shit was this much. Like, I If you're a shooter, you're a shooter. You got, yeah, if you yeah. can see the rim and get the shot off, that's, a, Man, that's what else true. you don't ask but for. But at, <laughs> at the end of the day, I, I just want them to try to create him some cleaner shots. Yeah. Some cleaner shot. They but, did it once or twice, and it's mm-hmm. like, all right, why can't we do this more often? But what I would say is, Zarek played great defense yeah. on on uh, CJ. I don't think I don't think CJ scored on Zarek. Yeah, I don't think. I he think we hit the it. three. It was over uh, Kirk, and Kirk played great defense. But yeah, Kirk is six. Some of them were six one. Too small. Yeah, Zarek is six six. It's, yeah, it's so hard. The difference. Yeah, he because he start, CJ started off the game. He scored. He might have scored like their first seven points or something like that, and then he kind of. Got quiet a little bit when uh, Reef went over there. But even when he was scoring, it wasn't like give me the ball ISO type. No, it it was, was. I think he might have got a put back. He hit the one uh the one post up where they yeah, didn't come so. double team him. Then yeah, he then. got free on a three. Yeah. But besides exactly. that, for the most part, he was kind of bottled up. The kid Adama had seventeen and twenty three, and th- to me it was weird because it was like I didn't even think he had seventeen. Like no. I knew he made like three or four post moves, and they fouled him at the end. But then I had to realize he got a lot of points off second chance opportunities exactly. too. Because it, so, it was just so many missed shots that he ain't had no choice. It's ball. Oh, hey, I'm here. I'm six ten. I'm gonna get this rebound easily. Well, that that the one call to me kind of messed the game up. Oh, you know, it was really it was God. I would say it was really well officiated. Like yeah. if they were bad, they were bad both sides. If they were good, they were good both sides. Uh, I think it was an anticipation call. Definitely an anticipation call. Forty-one to forty, 
They shoot a three. They miss. Adama gets the rebound. And Amai, I like Amai. He's very feisty, very uh, uh, well-minded defensive player. He might need to get that a little. That was, um, what number was that? Actually? I want to say he's number one, the, the, the short point guard with okay. the curly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly. Well, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. I liked him a little bit, too. He, um, he had some fights on him. He came right up under Adama and snatched the ball from him. He did, Adama didn't see him. He came, as soon as he landed, he just snatched it from him. Yep. And it, he he called the foul. We were, we had the perfect angle because we were literally yeah, sitting yeah. right in front of it, like exactly right parallel to the basket. It was no body contact at all. He literally just grabbed the ball out of his hand, and the, the ref from behind the play called the foul. Of yeah. course, Adama goes to uh, make both free throws. Uh, CJ gets one look. It rims in and out. Then it goes out of bounds. Then they get the, sh- the ball again. He took a tough look. Yeah. Uh, kind of fake. How much were they down at that point? They were down one. They were down when he got one. Fouled. Yeah. So you know, you talk about you talk about the three from the corner. That's, oh, they yeah, that, they, he missed the three. The, the, the he shot the I three didn't. That was the shot I didn't like. Yeah, he didn't like the, the fadeaway three. And they rammed in and out, and yeah. that's when Adama got the rebound and okay. fouled him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then he got, got another got look. He shot. It went out of bounds. It was ten seconds left. They got him the ball again. He shot a, a, a heavily contested three, yeah. and it looked good though. Hit Man, back iron. All his shots he took yeah. towards the. I'm like, jeez, that's a bad shot, but it was like it's about to go in. <laughs> Popped out, and then what you call him? Uh, Corey Floyd got the rebound. He shot a desperation three at the buzzer, and that looked good. It hit back iron. So, I mean, I think it was a good. Uh, I wouldn't say the most entertaining game, but now just looking at high school basketball, it was one of the better games. For me, because I don't, I think high school basketball is kind of down when we're looking at outside of the, the ranked schools. Okay. You know, the, the I mean, I feel like I need to get out and see a little bit more. Um, I've been going to check out some local games. Like, I have some uh, players that play AU for me. They play mm-hmm. some local schools, Milburn, Livingston, Irvington. You know, I've been to a couple of those games. I need to get out and see a little bit more. I want to see Central play. I want to see Storage play. Uh, Payne Tech. I want to see Danny. So I want to get out and catch a couple more games, so I could just have a better uh, mindset of what's what the ta- what is looking like right now in Jersey basketball. Um, a lot of people saying it's down right now, so I want to I want to see what's really out there. Well, you know, I mean, not to say it's down at talent wise. I don't want to kill the kids and they're not good, but you know, I, I think it might be. I feel like I'm that old dude that like man, my era. <laughs> I, I feel <laughs> like, I feel like I'm getting like close to that because uh, you know a lot of the things that they do. It's just a lack of basketball IQ. You know, they look more so for, you know, uh, the jelly and the highlight. Yeah, I think it's just a different style of basketball that's being played right now as opposed to when we were coming up. So I think that's what a lot of us old heads kind of get that, oh, our generation would do this, this, and that. But then you look at these kids, it's like, well, our generation, they have freaking 10 kids in the city going D1. Mm. You know, so it's it's different levels. Well, speaking of coming up, uh, we'll probably be our last topic. Uh, Kid Elijah Joyner goes to Tulsa, come up. Uh, father oh, never made yeah. it to a game. Uh, his father comes to his first game uh, ever. They, I think, was it ever or was it just college? I want to say ever. Um, but they play Wichita State. Wichita State, I want to say, is ranked number 24. Or if they're not ranked, they're a really good team in the uh, AAC. Yeah. And Tulsa beat them on a buzzer beater by Elijah Joyner. The first game his father came, he has a buzzer beater three to win the game. If you've seen the clip, he was crying all crazy. It was amazing. Like, amazing moment. Uh, it was really good to see. Uh, it was like a script out of Hollywood, to be honest. Like, I don't think Hollywood could write a script like that. Like, father comes to the game. Your team just happened to be down. You just happened to get the ball. and You just happened to take the shot. And it just happens to go in. Mm-hmm. Like, what – like you can't really write up something like that. Like you don't even see that in Madea movies. It might be the the, the Disney uh the Disney conference. They're not in the AAC. Yeah. They're in the Disney conference. Yeah, uh, it's that's like, like a, a Tyler. fairy tale. Yeah. So, but it was a it was a real real good feel good moment. You don't get too many of those too often, you know. And uh, happy for the kid. No, I'm extremely happy for him. I mean, what kid wouldn't want to be able to hit a shot like that in front of their pops? Like, like come on, man. Like, that's what dreams are made of. Like. Well, no matter what else happens in the rest of his basketball career, that's going to be a moment that him and his father can share for life. Like that, That's like a moment that exceeds basketball. Well, speaking of dreams, what's North Carolina's tournament dreams looking like and, right now? Um, I think we are out of time. <laughs> 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 no, nah, seriously, there's still a lot of basketball left, to be honest with you. There's still a lot of Cole basketball. Cole Anthony just came back. And my boy C.A. is back, so now I'm, I'm, I'm a little more hype. Like, and, but we've had a couple guys that's been stepping up. The kid, the kid Robinson's been doing well, not just because he got my last name, but he's been – 
He been balling. Uh, got a couple other pieces, people stepping up with him coming back. Once we get him back in the flow of things, we we've been up and down. We've been winning some games to keep us in the race a little bit. I think we're gonna have to make a run in the tourney. And um, I think you're gonna have to win the AAC. I mean ACC. I don't think we have I mean, to win the ACC. I think we gotta win a couple games in the tournament. And I don't think you're gonna add large, but did with your 500. Yeah, uh, I don't think yeah. y'all gonna get large. I think y'all gotta win the tournament. Depends. We st- like I said, we still got a couple more games left. We won a couple games, get us above. Mm-hmm. And you know, it depends on who we play. Well, my guys finally lost. We lost to Xavier. Yeah, we lost to Xavier. Yeah. Uh, Quincy McKnight got hurt, well, but we were still losing before that. Mm-hmm. I kind of felt it was a weird. We played at eleven o'clock in the morning. That rarely happens in college. Yeah, that's. But uh, we're still top. I want to say fifteen or something like that. So that should be good. Uh, before we get out of here, I want to shout out St. Benedict's Great Bees basketball team. Shout out my guy Aunt Nelson. Yeah. I ain't the biggest fan of the school no more like that. You see, I got the hat on repping my. You know, we I mean? always represent. We both Benedict's guys. Bula Bula. Shout out to my. Class of 03, everyone else from Benedict's. Yo, John Ford, you feel me? But they're ranked in the top 25. I saw that on the ESPN High School rankings. Yeah. Um, and we got, a, we got a group chat. He told me they was going to beat RC. He told me they was going to beat the Patrick School. They did mm-hmm. both. They beat, uh, I can't even pronounce the name of the school, Wachita or Washata, something like that. <laughs> they was ranked. They beat them. And uh, they don't even have, like, the, the roster they normally have with the McDonald's All-Americans and things like that. But they still kind of clawed their way to, uh, you know, national relevancy in top 25. So, shout out to them. Salute to them. No, that's dope. Um, um, shout out. Thanks for all the fans looking into another episode of the Clipboard. We appreciate yeah, the support. We definitely man. appreciate the support. Uh, 10,000 um, Hours Network. Uh, we got a bunch of other podcasts up there you can go watch. But keep supporting. Hit that subscribe button. Send a fan. Send a friend. You know, we love yeah. it. We appreciate you. Yeah, man. Each and every one of you, man. Out of here.